Khan Academy Kids. Seven Days a Week by Cynthia Platt. Cody was looking at the Kids Club calendar. Do you know what's funny? What? asked Sandy. There are seven days of the week, Cody said. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Why is that funny? Sandy asked. Well, there are things I do just one day a week, Cody said, and things I do all seven days of the week. That's true, Sandy said. I only see my grandma one day a week. And I go to soccer practice three days a week, but not all seven, Cody said. What are things you do on all seven days? Sandy asked. I take a bath seven days a week, Cody said. And I read bedtime stories seven days a week, said Sandy. Cool beans, said Cody. I read stories all seven days too. Do you know what else I like to do seven days of the week? Sandy asked. Hang out with me? Cody said. Of course, Sandy replied. Neat as Nine by Cynthia Platt. Alo wished Cody would come back to help clean up the nine dolls she had left out on the floor, but Cody wasn't around to neaten things up. Peck flew in to say hello. Will you help me put these dolls away? Alo asked. Of course, Peck said. I'll put this one in the toy box. But then I still have to put most of them away, said Alo. Can we split them up a different way? Peck pointed to three dolls. I'll take these. Hmm, said Alo. Maybe you could put away four dolls and I could put away five? That sounds good, said Peck. Then we can go have cookies. Alo and Peck found nine cookies in the snack area. Just then, Cody arrived. Cool beans, cookies, Cody said as she took some. I've come to help you eat them. Being Together by Cynthia Platt Cody wanted to play a game, but no one was around. Alo was sick. Sandy was at a music lesson. She looked for Peck, but he was napping. Cody was all alone. She didn't like to be alone. Cody looked up. Rhea was reading in a tree. She wasn't by herself anymore. What are you doing? Cody asked Rhea. Reading a new book about snakes, Rhea replied. Do you want to play? Cody asked. Rhea smiled. Not now. This is a really good book, she said. Cody frowned. Rhea closed her book. Do you want to sit quietly with me? She asked. Cody did. But Cody was not good at sitting quietly. She squirmed, she wiggled, she even sang and danced. Rhea closed her book again. I said sit quietly, she told Cody. This is not quiet. Cody tried to sit still. But she couldn't. She didn't want to be alone. But Rhea clearly did. Cody walked to the pool. Being at the pool didn't help though. Being alone was so boring and Cody really wanted to play. Want to read this? Rhea said. I think you'll like it. The book was about boats. Cody loved it. Rhea read about snakes. Cody read about boats, and it was like they were alone, but together. Hero in Training by Cynthia Platt Cody was reading comic books about superheroes. The heroes all sounded brave and thoughtful and strong. I want to be a hero too, Cody said, but how can I become one? 
I'll have to learn how to fly, said Cody. There was only one friend Cody knew who could fly. Peck, I need you to teach me how to fly, she said. That sounds like a fun idea, Peck replied. Let's do it! First, you need to flap your wings, Peck said. Cody tried, but her arms did not take her up in the air. Jump off this bench and try, Peck told her. There was no way Cody could fly, though. Are there other things heroes can do? Peck asked. Yes, said Cody. They can lift heavy things. Cody tried to lift a huge rock, but it was too heavy. Maybe I should try to squeeze into a tight space, said Cody. One of the heroes in my comics did that. I think you'll be good at that one, Peck told her. Sadly, Peck was wrong. I know, Cody exclaimed. I'll transform into my secret identity. Heroes all have those. Cody came back with a disguise. Hi, Cody, Peck said. You know who I am? Cody asked. Of course, replied Peck. Maybe I need a mask and cape, Cody said. I have both of those in my room, Peck told her. So Cody put on a mask and cape. I look like a hero, Cody said, but I haven't done anything heroic. Could you help me tie this? asked Peck. Tying this cape on is tough. Cody tied the cape and helped Peck put on his mask. Thanks, said Peck. You're my hero. Your hero? Cody replied. I finally did it! Something New by Cynthia Platt Cody sat alone at a table. This was not like her. What are you thinking about? Alo asked. Everything is different here, Cody said, and I'm the only one who's new. New can be exciting, Alo said. Yes, Cody agreed, but I like to know where everything is, and I don't yet. Alo had an idea. Let's go on a trip, Alo said, and get souvenirs as we go. A trip? Cody asked. Where? First, we're going to the beach, Alo told her. It wasn't really a beach, but Cody didn't mind. That was fun, said Alo. Let's rest in the sand for a while. Cody put some sand in a jar to keep. Where should we go now? asked Cody. To the restaurant, of course, replied Alo. I think I know where I want to go next, Cody said. Where? Alo asked. The art museum, Cody said. The art museum is my favorite place to be, Alo said. I like your paintings the best, Cody said. Do you want me to make one for you? Alo asked. Yes, Cody said, but I have an even better idea. You can use these, Cody said. Great idea, said Alo. It will be the best art ever, agreed Cody. It's very new and different, Alo said. And new can be very exciting, Cody said, laughing. A Special Place by Cynthia Platt Sandy's room is a special place. It's a sunny space filled with fun toys and musical instruments. Best of all, it has posters, pictures, and souvenirs from Australia everywhere. One day, Peck popped over to visit. He looked around her room. Have you ever been to Australia? He asked. I was born there, Sandy replied. Wow, Peck said. I didn't know that. My parents and I packed up our stuff and came here on a plane, Sandy told him. Peck pointed at the map. So you flew all the way from there? We spent hours in the air, Sandy said. 
I brought some souvenirs with me, Sandy said. Want to see them? Yes, Peck cheered. Sandy showed him a picture of a beach she loved. Then she pointed out her friend, Pat the platypus. Were you sad to leave? Peck asked. Part of me was sad, Sandy said, but part of me is happy to be here too. What do you miss most? Peck wondered. My pals, Sandy told him, and the sports. I loved playing rugby with them. Australia sounds like a special place, Peck told her. It is, Sandy replied, and I love to spend time talking about it. So will you tell me more? Peck asked. Sure, I have so much to show you, said Sandy. Side by side, Sandy and Peck spent the afternoon exploring her room and sharing stories. I'd love to go to Australia someday, Peck said, and I'd love to go with you, Sandy replied. Fun to Read by Katherine Rawson Rhea sat in the sun. She sat in the sun to read. It was fun to read, but it was not fun to sit in the sun. It was hot in the sun. Rhea saw a table. I will sit by the table, she said. If I sit by the table, I will not be hot. Rhea sat by the table. She sat by the table to read. It was not fun to sit by the table. It was hot by the table. Rhea saw a chair. I will sit on the chair, she said. If I sit on the chair, I will not be hot. Rhea sat on the chair. She sat on the chair to read. It was not fun to sit on the chair. It was hot on the chair. Rhea was hot, but her leg was not. My leg is not hot, she said. Why not? This is for you, Rhea, said Peck. It is not hot. No, it is not, said Rhea. It is not hot. Starting to Worry by Cynthia Platt When Cody didn't show up at the kids' club for two whole days, Ala was starting to worry. So he did what he always did when he was worried. He painted. Ala hoped that Cody would arrive to finish the painting with him. When Cody didn't, Ala worried more. He started a coloring page to try to feel better. Cody wasn't at the kids' club the next morning either. What if she was sick? It was hard to enjoy his art when Ala was so worried about Cody. I love the colors you used in that painting, Alo, said Cody when she finally arrived. Ala was so relieved to see her. Where have you been? he asked. I was on vacation with my family, Cody said. But now I'm back. I'm so happy, Alo said. Want to make some more art with me? Art always makes me feel better, and so do you. Today, we're going to read about dump trucks. Monster dump trucks. Monster dump trucks. Giant dump trucks help builders and miners move heavy loads. Every dump truck has a cab. This is where the driver sits. The bed is the large box behind the cab. It holds sand, dirt, and more. Off-road dumpers. The largest dump trucks do not travel on roads. They are too big. Some dump trucks are taller than houses. 
the tires can be taller than a person. People use ladders to climb into these dump trucks. Biggest dump trucks. The biggest dump trucks have king size beds. They carry up to 400 tons. That is the weight of 200 cars. Today, we're going to read about baby lions. Baby lions. Cubs. Baby lions are called cubs. They are born in litters of two to four babies. Life in the pride. Lion cubs live in prides. A pride can have many litters and mothers. Each mom cares for her own litter. The moms work together to protect their cubs from danger. Newborn cubs drink their mom's milk. Older cubs eat with the big lions. Mom keeps her cubs clean. She licks their fur. Cubs need a lot of rest. They snuggle close to one another. Playtime. Lion cubs love to run and jump. Brothers and sisters wrestle. Playful cubs also copy mom and dad. They pretend to hunt. This cub wants to be like dad. He shows his scariest face. Roar!